One pretty bag went down the street, some fresh fish for to find. And the wheat and crack falling off their heart, and they could start by and by. Oh, we're to the right for the need and die, though. We're to the right for the need and die, way. We're to the right for the need and die, though. We're to the right for the need and die. Oh, how can I get to your father's house? How can I get to your bed? When your father locks the door, look right, and the keys lie under his head. Way, you're to the right for the need and die, though. We're to the right for the need and die, way. You're to the right for the need and die, though. Oh, it's any right for the need and die I go and I get the ladder And I have thirty steps and three And I put it up to the chamber top And into the queue with me Way, it's any right for the need and die, though Way, it's any right for the need and die Way, it's any right for the need and die, though Way, it's any right for the need and die So I went and I got the ladder And I have thirty steps and three And I put it up to the chamber top And into the queue with me Way a teddy right for the need and die though. Way a teddy right for the need and die. Way a teddy right for the need and die though. Way a teddy right for the need and die. Oh, piece of ease, could the old wife get the dreams running through her head? To the lame and lame, said the grey old wife, there's a man in your daughter's bed. Way a teddy right for the need and die, though. Way a teddy right for the need and die. Way a teddy right for the need and die, though. Way a teddy right for the need and die. So when the old man went up the stairs into the daughter's room, he was telling me at my evening prayers, and I'm just lying down. Way a teddy right for the need and die, though. Way a teddy right for the need and die. Way a teddy right for the need and die, though. Teddy right for the need and die And the old man went back down the stairs Back to the grey old wife She's lying with a prayer book in her hand Praying for you and I Way a teddy right for the need and die though Way a teddy right for the need and die Way a teddy right for the need and die though Way a teddy right for the need and die And it's oh I rocked her didn't I rock her Oh I rocked her well No grey old wife was standing the way I rocked her off to hell Way a teddy right for the need and die though Way a teddy right for the need and die Way Teddy right for the reading I do. We're 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 Teddy right for the reading I That was the Paul McKenna Band and Pretty Peg as yet unheard recording from Garden Session's second birthday concert in May. They'll be appearing at Festival Folk at the Oak, venue 309, this Friday the 15th of August. Welcome to the Garden Sessions, episode 67, live from the streets of Edinburgh. We are on the Royal Mile, gardensessions.co.uk. Contact us at podcast at gardensessions.co.uk. And we're also available at 98.8 in the Edinburgh area, Leith FM, where Leith lives. I'm Jack Foster, and joining me as ever... The Christine and Neil Hamilton of the Scottish folk scene. Talking, of course, of Frank Burkett and Dave the Angus Gimble. Well, let's not waste any time at all talking about the Hamiltons. We've got a great show for you this week. We As you do. can hear, peeps, we're on the mile. It's already louder than it was it last week. It is mental. Dave, what do you think about the festive spirit that we're experiencing here on the mile? I think it's fantastic. I'm just, I'm, I'm sort of watching out of the corner of my eye a man about to juggle while standing on top of a plank, on top of a cylinder, on top of a plank, on top of a cylinder, on top of a plank. Focus, Dave. Focus. What's coming up on this show? Well, before we do that, though, I can tell you one thing that's coming up on this show. We will make sure of Frank. Yeah. Dave's not too happy with this, but Dave will be on a unicycle before the end of the show. He certainly will. I mean, we've had absolute screeds of letters in, which you'll hear later on in the letters bag, demanding Dave be on a unicycle. We will find a unicycle. We're on the mile in the festival. We're better it's to the be. Best. 
festival, yes. To find a unicycle. Surely to goodness we can do that. Dave, what's coming up on the show? Uh, we've got the usual features. We've got uh, the Folky News. We've got the download chart. We've got the angle, uh, as well as some fantastic reports. We've got one from the Doghouse Roses that uh, Silver caught up with the other day. We've got Alistair Hewlett and Phil Snell. And we've got John Malcolm and John, uh, John Malcolm and Stuart McCarty. What a lineup! <laughs> that sounds pounding. Um, can you give us a hint on your angle, Dave? Uh, it's metaphorical. Right. Mm, rubbish hint. Give us uh, another one. I find the metaphorical <laughs> angles aren't as good. Well, well, you'll just have to accept that because that's what you've got this week. Uh, another hint. Uh, it, uh, it's metaphorical and it's classic English folk. Okay. Mm. Frank, what can you see? Take a look around you. We're on the mile. I'm looking down at the moment, so I'm seeing cobbles. But when I look up, I see a man with a crazy haircut with a tennis racket and some juggling balls. I, I look to my left, and there's a, a recycling facility there for all the, <laughs> the for flyers. There is such a big crowd. There's people with face paint. There's people with a balloon modelling. There's a man over there with the world's smallest kite. I can't take it all in, but there's it's no... It's a carnival atmosphere. But there's no folk. We are the only folk here. Well, uh, talking of folk, Frank, what are we, we're going to go to a report now, I think, aren't we? Um, Chris Silver's one. Um, tell us what that is. This is very exciting. Chris Silver went along to Festival Folk at the Oak to see the Doghouse Roses. of the Doghouse Roses. I want to welcome to the Garden Sessions. Why, thank you. It's a great set tonight. One of the interesting things, just observing your, your music, it seems to be sort of equally tinged with sort of blues and the music of people like, you know, Burns and uh, Sc Scottish folk and that kind of tradition. Which came first? Oh, that's... A not, not, not historically, no, no. but in terms of your own taste. Oh, no, I realise, I realise. <laughs> Um, to be honest, it's just a, it's an amalgamation of both for us because we see traditional music as being not just the Scottish traditional music but also music that comes from America and a lot of the American folk, which essentially is, you know, from the south, I guess, that's the blues and, you know, when you get further up, the bluegrass and, and all that sort of thing. So we see it all as folk music and traditional in its own way and that's that's where we get a lot of our influences from. It's very broad. You are based in, in, in Glasgow and... Um, it's interesting at this time where sort of Edinburgh is the place to be. Do you find the sort of folk scene, the songwriting scene in Glasgow to be sort of helpful in your in your development? 
It is as well. This um, Glasgow is quite an exciting place uh, where music's involved. I mean, we've never lived in Edinburgh. There's a lot of acoustic music going on. There's obviously Celtic Connections Festival happens in Glasgow. Um, there's music every every night of the week. I think I think there was um, one person said to me when they were visiting Glasgow that there was one night he looked in the listings and there were 56 gigs on one night. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, take take what you want from it but um, there's a lot of music happens in Glasgow so it's a good place to be. The main folk, folky hawk spot for us would be the Star Folk Club which is held every Thursday night that's, I mean that's... Lovely a venue big, isn't it? As a venue, it's a wonderful venue and, uh, and it's a wonderful club. In terms of sessions, the Ben Nevis is probably the main session there. Although I don't usually go to sessions too often because they're not, they're not too hot on singers in sessions. Tend to, be, tend to be more keen on the fiddlers for singing songs, obviously the Oaks like the best place to come really. Um, but but we're not through in Edinburgh very often, and the, and the transport system's about through to Glasgow. Terrible, so. <laughs> yes, they're appalling. I agree. I've, I've been stuck in Buchanan Street bus station late on a weekend many times. Well, and the next time that happens, give us a call, and you can come and stay at ours, don't worry. Thank you so much. <laughs> Finally, if you could, you've got a new album out, a very new album. Yes, it's very new. It's been about 12 months in the making. Finally, we've got it back from the... From the print and press and uh, it will be released officially around about the end of September and we'll probably do a launch in Glasgow for it probably in our spiritual home the State Bar on Holland Street which is where we we choose to go drinking in Glasgow that's where we choose to go uh, it's been a, it's been a labor of love put it that way and it's it's uh, it's got a lot of extra instrumentation on it that we don't have live um, cellos from Robert Irvin who is the cello player for the Sc- Scottish Opera Wolf Taylor who used to play with Cab Cayley on the percussion it was produced and arranged by Malcolm Lindsay who does a lot of film and TV type stuff uh, like Young Adam and Excellent, well I shall look forward to listening to that sounds excellent, Iona, thank you very much My pleasure, thank you mm-hmm. And that was Chris Silver, who met up with Iona McDonald of the Doghouse Roses the other day. And the song you heard at the beginning of that report was Burns' A Fun Kiss. Uh, more info at doghouseroses.net. Jack, coming up on the show. Coming up on the show. Dave, you sound like you're falling asleep. It's Hello. a festival here. Get a grip, Dave. We want more more energy and a more pazam. We're on the Royal Mile. There's an Australian juggling behind us. I'm saving my energy, Jack, actually, for the unicycling, which apparently I have to do, although I'm trying to try my best not to. You made your own bed by saying you owned one last week. If you can't ride one, it's your problem. Anyway, um, <laughs> coming up coming up on the show still, we have Alistair Hillett and Phil Snell, John Malcolm and Stuart McHardy, as well as, of course, all the best in new songwriting and traditional folk music. Folk news in just a moment. The download chart. Dave, what can you tell us about the download chart this week? Uh, very exciting. We've got uh, two climbers, three non-movers in the chart. Will one of those non-movers be the number one? Will it? That's what I want to know. Frank, what do you want to know? I don't really care. Oh. Um, sorry, sorry. I take that back. Of course I care because it's festival time. It's the festival. And we're on the mile. But right now, Jack, I'm going to crack on into my bit, my bit of the show. Okay, Frank, go ahead. We're going to have to move, obviously, whilst Paddy speaks, but go for it, Frank. It's news. It's folk. What is it, Frank? It's the folky news. Mm -hmm. And the folky news brought to you this week, as ever, in association (laughs) with Festival Folk at the Oak. We continue with Festival Folk at the Oak every night for 36 nights during the festival, 8.30 to 11 o'clock. On Tuesday, the 12th of August, Sarah Gray and Kieran Means will sing the finest American songs accompanied on banjo and guitar. And then, probably one of the hottest tickets in the festival, certainly where the Oak is concerned, we've got the Long Notes. The Long Notes on Wednesday, the 13th of August. They did a brilliant gig at Leith Folk Club got five star reviews for that they did uh, a gig at Edinburgh Folk Club which was absolutely brilliant so three piece fantastic tunes and songs Robin Lang songs with a whiskey flavour on uh, Thursday the 14th of August Paul McKenna band a favourite here at the Oak on Friday the 15th of August Kieran Halpin back from Australia after a year's absence uh, he'll be here on Saturday the 16th of August Claire Mann and Alan Jones a tremendous duo on Monday the 18th Okay, the top story this week. The annual Tonder Festival, Folk Music Festival, (laughs) uh, in Tonder, Denmark. 
uh, takes place between the 28th and 31st of August, so the Tonda Folk Music Festival really would be the best way to put that. Founded in 1975, the festival has developed itself into one of the most important festivals for traditional and modern folk music. There went 1,000... I, I, sorry to interrupt, I don't know whether the listeners can hear this, but there seems to be like some kind of um, church organ in the background. Well, it could be because we're sitting outside a church. Uh, with Cathedral. Cathedral, indeed, St Giles Cathedral. And uh, we have actually just kind of found a wee quiet spot off the, the bustling mile, but we've now being serenaded by one of Handel's organ concertos or something. So uh, Anyway, news. But I'll carry on. This uh, Tondra Festival in Denmark was founded in 1975. The festival has developed itself into one of the most important festivals for traditional and modern folk music. There were 1,950 volunteers attached My to the festival goodness. in 2007. The programme is composed of international artists, especially from Ireland, Scotland, Canada, USA, England and Scandinavia. Amongst the lineup this year will be Mary Black, The Oyster Band, Eddie Reader, Altan, Seth Lakeman, Bruce Guthrow, Shugal Nifty, The Ducks... Trever Magaska Trever Magaska Come on, Frank. Sorry, I'm, I'm just, I'm so taken aback by this man's trills in the background. <laughs> uh, the Ducks, Drever, Makuska and Wumble, Emily Smith, Anna Massey and Brian McNeil. For more information on that, see www.tf.dk. Oh, to be in Denmark. Oh, to be in Denmark, indeed. And finally, Britain's first folk podcast. Folk cast presented by Phil the Wid Widows and Ken Nickel has hit bumpy ground in the last few months uh, following a spate of shows which saw Phil's co presenter absent due to other commitments performing with the current lineup of Steel Eye Spam. Folk cast experimented with a solo show presented by a lone Phil Widows and two podcasts with Phil's wife Jo as a guest presenter. Folk cast mm. confirmed fears this month that it is fast becoming an endangered podcast as this month's show was supplanted with a service announcement. Uh, telling listeners that the August edition of their monthly show would be delayed for, quote, a couple of weeks. Well, uh, you can get more info on Folkcast at folkcast.co.uk. Let's hope it's not the end. Basically, keep up to date with all the folky news at gardensessions.co.uk forward slash news. That's the folky news. Give me a jingle that'll make me tingle. Mm -hmm. The official garden sessions download chart. The official garden sessions download chart. This is the official Garden Session download chart based on free From downloads. the mile. Yes, from the they mile. They like it, Dave. Oh, they're, they're up for it. Give them it, Dave. Give them it. Uh, it's based on free downloads from gardensessions.co.uk. As I said earlier, very exciting. Two climbers, three non-movers. <laughs> Will one of them be the <laughs> At 10, Speak it's a re-entry. What are you saying, Dave? At 10, it's a re-entry for the Paul McKenna Band and Take My oh Hand. My at goodness. 9, another re-entry. The arrows are back and black is the colour. At 8, a re-entry. Sinead Connolly and Eileen Oag. Bye. Just walk the other way For they're mostly like the pride of hot to hold I lead old, my heart has grown gray Ever since that day you wandered far away I lead old, there's good for so they say But there's none of them like the pride of hot to hold at seven, it's a re-entry for Nick Keir, an American accent. At six, up one, Alan Still, and contrary soul. <laughs> At five, down two, Frank Burkett, the man standing Ooh. to my right and working hands. Nice. And at that point, the boy looked down and he saw the mud on his shoes. And he felt the pain that for the rest of his days he'd be labouring away his blues. He knew there was a world beyond his father's golden land. And he swore he'd be the first of the sun. Four, it's a non-mover -move for Alan Still and Anya Maria. Turn the page at three. Up three. It's tense here on the mark. Can I just say it's tense? It's tense. Before we get into the top three, it's very tense. tense. It's gone very there quiet. Was, there's a street performer performing, but the whole crowd has turned around to look at you, Dave. And you. Like, what's happened, Dave? You better give them what they want to hear. They want to know what the garden session number one is. Well, at three, it's up three, Kareem Power and Made of the Lock. At two, a non-mover, Anna <laughs> McDonald, which means that a non-mover at number one, Garden Sessions number one, is Anna McDonald again, and you held out your hand. Good ah. stuff. Mm -hmm. Held out your hand to me, and I took it willingly. Traveller on the road. Walking 
some ways till we reached our cross in the Lord. You promised me a gold ring with diamonds. You promised me ten fleets for the sea. You promised me fine horses and smile and turn away the sun paints the road so gold she casts no shadows there and darkness cannot break her sphere she is my lady of the road you promised me Ten fleets for the sea. You promised me fine horses and courage, but like the wind. Anna McDonald, you held out your hand. The official garden session number one. Impeccable taste, listeners. Impeccable, can I just say. Well, Silver warned that she may be there for a long time. And, and I, I hope she is, because it's a lovely song. It is. It's wonderful stuff. Um, we're on the mile. It's festival time. It's one. Of, it's our festival episodes. And we're, we're, there isn't just crazy music going on all around us. Frank, what's happening here? Well, we have um, a lovely, I think, judged by the way she's dressed, a Japanese lady playing some kind of... Uh, far eastern instrument and on our right we have a man with some kind of drum box and a guitar he stopped now though he was playing before um he has stopped now um but it is the festival and there the mile are people everywhere rain threatens i'm holding a brolly in the same hand as my notes but uh and, and so just, far so dry just behind you can see frank there's a sort of caricature stand they're not very good caricatures well, though don't say that too loudly i Jack. won't but they aren't very good. Dave, do you think you can do better caricatures? Uh, I don't think I can do better. No, I think they're fun. they're fine caricatures. <laughs> He's careful because oh, he knew he'd yeah, be doing one next exactly. week. <laughs> Didn't fall into the unicycle trap this week, did you, Dave? Talking of which, we need to keep our eyes open for a unicycle. Well, I see a man with an ordinary bike. We could just take a wheel it's off. Close. Um, <laughs> but probably a bit harsh on that guy. So, um, um, Dave. Well, not really. No, not really. No, that's <laughs> Um, yes, so anyway, I think it's coming up for angle time. We only got like one hint out of you, Dave, and it was a rubbish hint. Two hints out of me. Metaphorical right. and what was the other hint? Classic English folk. Ah, yes. Okay, okay, so it could be anything. Metaphorical, you don't do metaphors in your angle. Well, I'm doing metaphors this time. It's a festival show, it's crazy! <laughs> you know, yeah. I just got handed a flyer, Scott Capurro is going deeper. How deep? Just deeper. I don't know how deep. Maybe he went deep last year and now he's going deeper this year. I don't know. <laughs> Dave, Dave, what's, what's your, your angle? angle? <laughs> uh, the angle this week is Pentangle and John Barleycorn must die. There were three men came out of the west, their fortunes for to try. Then these three men made a solemn vow, John Barleycorn should die. They ploughed, they sowed, they held him in through the gods of on his head. Then 
then they let him lie for a very long time till the rain from heaven did fall. But little Sir John sprang up his head and soon no face there more. Then they let him stand till midsummer come till he left for mail and more. But little Sir John he grew a long beard and so became a man. Must Die, featuring John Renborn and of course Bert Janch, both of whom are at this year's Edinburgh Festival and we can confirm that we'll have an exclusive report from Janch's show at St Bride's, Benny123 when Silver caught up with the man himself, that'll be on next week's show. Um, we've stepped into a coffee shop which is quite loud, quite brash, um, I think a salad cream in my egg mayonnaise, I'm not too happy. I like salad cream, I'd be quite happy with that. Yeah, not, not an egg mayonnaise. Oh, sandwich. no, that's a good shout, good shout. How's your coffee, Frank? My coffee's good, actually. It's strong, uh, meaty. Is meaty, that meaty, meaty coffee? Is that an adjective you can use to describe coffee? Dave, what? tell us. I don't, I don't see why not. Good. How's Excellent. your coffee, Dave? I don't have a coffee. I've got more important things to think about. Anyway. You've got no money. <laughs> anyway. What's your angle, Dave? Tell us about John Barleycorn must die. Why must John Barleycorn die? Uh, well, uh, as, I, uh, as I said earlier on, it's, it's a metaphorical angle uh, and in a slightly bizarre, crazy, festival-esque twist. I want mm -hmm. you to try and tell me, if you can, when the sort of metaphorical stuff really kicks in and All what right. you think it's a this metaphor for. This is a for. street show, Dave. Um, the there's an allotted time for this angle, Dave. Get on with it. Essentially, it starts off as these three guys, and they, they come they come from the west, and they, they're they're wanting to, to fly their trade to see if they can make some money, uh, and they've made a vow between the, the three west of, of them. Where? That, uh, the west of where? The west of England, I assume. Why do you it's assume that? Because it's an English song. West of England, where's that? America. Um, most places, if you go far enough west. Get on with it. Um, and they've, they've, they've made this pact between the three of them that John Barleycorn uh, has to be killed. John it's Barleycorn an odd name, John die. Barleycorn. It is an odd name. So what they do is they, 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 they plough and they sow and they, they harrow John Barleycorn in and they throw clods upon his head. 
Um, I see the speak? metaphor. Uh, I've spotted it. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't think it was going to be as hidden as you would have hoped it to no, be. No, it's really not. It's quite obvious. Essentially, it's a song you, you about growing can't You can't plough and hoe a man. No, it's a, so- it's a song I about growing... Think, uh, and he is barley corn. Barley. Right, OK. Yeah. Uh, is this going to go anywhere? Well, uh, I did they, enjoy they the song. There. This is a rubbish angle. They leave him in the, in the, in the soil and the, the rain falls and... Uh, can hear you for the coffee maker. Springs up and he's he, he, they're all amazed that he's he's come out of the out of the ground when essentially he was just dead before the rains and they leave him there till midsummer. Uh, and that's a bit uh, like the Wicker Man, but they actually the crops did grow. Yes, okay. the crops did grow. <laughs> um, they leave him there till midsummer and mm. um, he, he, he so grows a, a, a long long beard. Essentially, the the the. the, the the ears of corn are growing out of the stems and it says in the, in the song he's become a man. Dave, you know? are you just describing the process of this, growing and cutting this is corn? This one big metaphor, isn't it, Dave? It, it pretty much, yes. They get these these, uh, these guys in with, the, with their sides to... Uh, then to, more with pitchforks, yeah. Yeah, and they, they chop down the barley and... Um, John Barley Corn. They take it into, into, the, um, into the barn and they wrap mm. it up in bales. God. And, um, I've got to say something, Dave. I didn't realise that this song was Actually well, guys, this. for more information, go to gardensessions.co.uk forward slash agriculture. Yes, um, <laughs> or don't, because you'll find nothing there. Um, <laughs> no, I don't actually do that. And essentially, um, they, they, you know, it's the process of, 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 uh, of harvesting corn. They get the men in with, um, with their, their sticks to to separate him skin from bone, it says in the song. But essentially, they're, 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 they're oh, getting the Dave, corn I'm off bored the stems. Stiff you. Uh. So essentially, let me do one of my recaps. John Barleycorn is not actually a man. He's actually the name they have given to Barleycorn, or barley, or corn, whatever it is. Essentially, and barley essentially corn. they're not beating up John Barleycorn. They're going through the motions of planting the seed, it growing, them harvesting it, then them crushing it into whatever. Is this like whatever. a Morris dance or something? <laughs> Um, the sort of thing you'd expect Morris, Morris dancers, dancers to be. I mean, I think you, you've just heard the song. You could probably Are Morris you dance too. You're condoning Morris dancing, Dave. In certain circumstances, there's so, nothing Dave, necessarily there are no wrong circumstances with Morris. But Morris, Morris dancing aside, aside people right? People seem to enjoy it. It's fine. Morris though. dancing aside, what the hell? Uh, you're not going to find a moral here. Well, the the, <laughs> the, uh, the what's the, the moral? The Cut last the corn verse, when it's uh, ready. The last verse goes on about you know the, the huntsman and, and the tinker, and they couldn't they couldn't uh, the huntsman couldn't cat hunt the fox, um, and the tinker couldn't uh, mend kettles. If Why it not for John Barleycorn? <laughs> oh, because the barley is the, essentially it's the key exactly, ingredient of everything. It's this it's this, the, this idea that it's the, the basic crop, the the, the things that the, that feed but that's you are the most the, important. But that's they, not they the are. moral. The moral is just cut it when it's ready. Harvest it when it's time to harvest a it. A mouthful of egg sandwich there, Jack. Yeah. Not working well for you. Good, good. Good. So the moral, you're just not coming with me on this. Mar- the moral is be a this, farmer. On this metaphorical I mean, angle, are you? You're just not. You're not up for it. You personally, I think it's a rubbish angle. It's shoddy, dude. Is that your angle, I thought, Dave? I thought we'd do a bit something different for the festival. Yes, that is my angle. Mm-hmm. Wow. Cheers for that, Dave. I think we're going to get out of this um, coffee shop quite swiftly because it's not very good. We'll not mention what it's called um, because they didn't give us anything for free. Oh, look, they're off again making coffee. Steaming milk, (coughs) crushing beans. Right, um, yes, time to go over to the Oak now. I believe Chris Silver has um, got us a, a wee report there. Uh, I'm joined now by folk singer, one-time punk singer, Alistair Hewitt. Alistair, welcome to the Garden Sessions. Oh, thank you for having me on the Garden Sessions, Chris. And also, of course, as accompanist for the evening, Phil Snell. Hello, Garden Sessions. Lovely to have you on the show. Um, Alistair, you sing um, several songs in your, in your set this evening. I, I, I did. <laughs> you did. <laughs> Which were um, the songs, you know, for, there, was, there was one song about sort of, you know, taking drugs and perhaps more rock and roll aspects of playing music over the past so many years. How does it feel to sort of take those kind of songs to a folk club audience? Well, they were not originally written for a folk club audience because uh, I used to play with a punk folk band back in the 80s called Roaring Jack over in Australia. The, the kind of idea was, was to play folk music but do it the way the, the, the Sex Pistols or The Clash would do it rather than, you know, Jethro Tull. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were more concerned with realism than escapism, so there, were, there weren't many songs about elves or those kind of escapist concerns we were writing songs about about contemporary life but using the folk form so a lot of those songs were written during that period 
So it's kind of weird bringing them to a, a, a folk club atmosphere because, uh, especially when you strip them right back down to acoustic instruments, the lyrics push themselves right up to the very fore and sometimes yeah. it, it can be more in your face mm. uh, in its acoustic form than it ever was when they were originally played with an electric band. You have um, a new album out with a new band, the, the Malkies, called Suited and Booted. Yeah. Um, and this is where Phil comes in with his accompaniment on lap steel guitar and mandolin and fiddle. He was also the album producer as well. He, he recorded yeah. it and mixed it. And A man of many talents. <laughs> did, um... I've, done about that. Yeah. <laughs> I've done lots of albums over the years. It's kind of what I do, you know. It's, I, I do probably more of that than anything else, really, mm. producing albums for people. And there's this experience of, sort of mixing sort of, uh, American music, Scottish music, perhaps even some punk songwriting. How has that been for you? I've, I've kind of always done it, really. I think that's probably why Ali and I got together in the first place when we met it suddenly we just clicked mm. yeah because I've, I've I suppose uh, you know I do solo stuff and mostly it's American it's, it's got an American bent to it and Ali's, Ali's uh, a big fan of uh, traditional American music and we just it just fit, fitted together perfectly well and I had a couple of friends a bass player and a drummer who were um, you know re- ready for it and it just happened didn't it really it felt like we'd been together for years and it just fell into place it just really worked yeah. straight yeah. off there wasn't nobody learned anything we just played it you know, and that's how it works. You, you finished your set tonight with the uh, the internationality. Now, that's a song that perhaps, in this day and age, is often you know it's perhaps seen as you know perhaps a bit too militant, perhaps almost a bit too violent and revolutionary to be played uh, as a sort of celebratory song. <laughs> um, why why is it still? Why, because, why do you still play it today? Because revolution is the celebration of the oppressed, the carnival of the oppressed. I think that the basic notion that a better world is possible informs that song. Unfortunately, the song has become historically associated with the Stalinist regimes, mm. uh, which, which, along with most other right-thinking socialists, I completely reject. I don't consider myself standing in that Stalinist kind of tradition. And the guy who wrote that song didn't either. Mm. It's a song about emancipation. It's not a song about violence. Uh, I mean, did you introduce it as a as a folk song essentially when during the well, uh, well uh, it's 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 almost a, attained folk song status, mm-hmm. hasn't it? Because it's it's been translated, and, and and most of the people who sing it wouldn't know the name of the guy who wrote it. It's yeah. become a, a a song that we all feel some sort of ownership of, mm-hmm. you know, a sort of collective ownership of. So I suppose, in a sense, it is a folk song. In that sense, it's also a wonderful song. I think it's at time for it to be released from the confines of uh, being solemnly intoned mm-hmm. by men standing up on the balcony of the Kremlin while the tanks roll past. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Well, on on that note, uh, Phil Snow and Alistair Hewitt, thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. No saviour from an idol of ours No faith have we in Prince of Peer Our own right hand the chains must shiver Chains of hatred, greed and fear Ere the thieves will out with dumpity And give to all a happier lot Each act the foes must do their duty And will strike while the iron is hard Ah, so come race, come rally and the last fight let us face The internationale Unites the human race Us old comrades come rally And the last fight let us face The internationale Unites the human race The internationale Unites the human race It's getting later on in the day and we are at the top of the mile now outside the hub. Um, is it even a venue this year uh, for the, the Fringe? Uh, I don't think it is a venue. I it's, can't see a venue number. It's why people buy a lot of tickets and it's just a hub of activity. It's a hub, you might say. Uh, but we're, we're here getting bustled around by the tattoo crowds. The crowds are going in as we speak. We're at the gate. We can't go any further than this because... It's, I've never seen a row of more cops. There's at least six, seven, maybe eight in, in a row there. That's seven cops in a row and a lot of stewards. And there's military police as well. But, so we've been denied access further up the mile, but we're here and that's all good. Anyway, it's time for this. Oh, God! Oh, Jesus Christ! Garden Sessions Letters 
Yes, indeed, all that talk of the Wicker Man earlier, and uh, there it is. But it's time for the letters bag. I don't have my letters bag thing here. Dave, go first. No, Dave, you can't speak at all oh, during this oh, letters bag. Yeah, no. <laughs> Every single letter in this letters bag, as you heard from the, the alarm that sounded before the jingle, is directed at you, Dave. Uh, this one is from Ali the Postman. Dave, speak up during the angle. It's enormously irritating to listen to your voice start out strong and then wither it into your chest in a barely audible grumble. Your comments, Dave? Uh... Take the note, Dave. Take the note. Frank, let me see these letters. Um, okay, um, this one was from Dave. Um, do, you, do you want to read this one? You can read this one, Dave. <laughs> yes, this is what I, I, I left this just to, just to quell any ridiculous rumours. I just want to get this off out of the way right now and say that I'm sorry to say I will not be on a unicycle before ordering this show. Uh, I will not risk, uh, uh, list now the number of painful reasons why. Suffice to say, there are many. And unfortunately, listeners, the sky is beginning to bruise, which means that it chances, is looking less likely. Chances of finding a unicycle are, are diminishing by the second. Anyway, um, I I put a letter out there as well. This is a lot from us actually. Um, I have one saying yes, you will, but obviously you know that anyway. Frank, you've got one from Tom. Tom said damn straight angles and uh, acoustic lady lad, regular chipper in her. Uh, you misunderstand angles, whether you can ride a unicycle or not, you will be on one for the next show. You better stop blustering because all that wind won't help you stay on it. <laughs> good uh, play on words there. That's good. Oh. Megaphone in the background there. Yeah, maybe he'll have a unicycle. Maybe, probably not though. I doubt it. And uh, the masses, Dave, say, on your bike, Dave. And the best one, which I want to read, Frankie, well, I know you wanted to. I could see it, you were about to. I concede. This is from Tom. Said Red Molly to Dave, that's a fine uni bike. <laughs> And angles could feel special in any such like. What do you have to say to this, Dave? I I can't you I can't unis I I have a unicycle I haven't ridden it for can, very long. Bring time. you back to acoustic lady lad. I can't do it. It it's doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you can do it or not. Anyway, Maybe, certainly by the next show we'll get him on. Yes, one. We by the end of the festival, Dave will be on a unicycle. Yes. Okay, that's the letters bag. And of course, you can contribute to the Letters Bag podcast at gardensessions.co.uk um, or the feedback forum, which is on the left hand side on the website, about halfway down the page. Dave, go get me a tattoo program. They're only £7. <laughs> only £7? It's a bargain. <laughs> get £2 a Guinness for that. You could, you could. Frank, what is coming up next? Uh, well, it's very exciting. Coming up next, we've got tune time. Oh, yes. Why have we got tune time, Frank? Uh, because we always have tune time. That's okay. a feature of the show. Well, you should us, know that. Tell us what it is. All right, it's Eamon Coyne with Connaught Jigs, Tear in the Bog.
kind Connacht Jigs day in the bog. We're still at the top of the mile. Um, just as I said, the hub and the tattoo is going in. We're not going to see it, though. Um, it's not folk enough. Couldn't get tickets, and it's not folk It's far too military. We're, we're passive people. Seven pound a ticket? No, no, no. sorry. <laughs> no, no. That's a bargain. <laughs> that would bargain. be good. Seven pound a programme, which can only <laughs> tell you how expensive the tickets are. Anyway, that tune you just heard there, Eamon Coyne, um, is from his album. They keep this, this megaphone. That's from his album, Through the Round Window. Coyne will be appearing at Festival Folk at the Oak venue 309 on Wednesday, 27th of August, with his former band, Russell's House after Paddy Bort persuaded them to reform specially for the occasion. Over now to Dave in the Oak, who is with <laughs> John Malcolm and Stuart McCarty. Uh, thanks for joining us, first of all. Thank you, thanks. My pleasure. Normally you uh, you play more of a, a, a double act, but this evening you decided to, to take it in turns, go song about. Do you find that kind of uh, gives you an ability to get a bit of competition, one-upmanship, kind of lifts the evening? Or? I hadn't thought of that, we could have. <laughs> <laughs> we, do, we do play, we have done things together, but uh, you know we do things separately as well. We, we do solo gigs a lot as well, so uh, we did it as a kind of a, a joint solo gig plus plus some together as well. You know, yeah. we've, been, we've been playing together for 30 odd years and there are various levels of act that we do. We kind of, we do themed stuff for schools and for museums and that kind of stuff and we kind of work together. It's great for me because I'm not doing nearly as much music as John but tonight, because it's a festival, we just thought let's try it and see if it, see if it works. We didn't have a playlist, we didn't have any idea, we just both came along with a notion in our head that we'd have a go at it, and it seems to have gone down awfully well. It's the festival, so you've got to try something new, haven't you? You bring a lot of sort of very academic knowledge into the show. How do you find that kind of bringing history into the performance helps the theme of the evenings? I see it as like we're awfully fortunate in Scotland because we've got a culture that's never died in terms of storytelling, in terms of song in various languages, in Gaelic and in Scots and all the rest of it. We've got all these different aspects of our culture that are alive, they've never died. And we are awfully lucky in the sense that we can draw upon that at any time and be part of the constant recreation of that. And we're not historic by singing old songs because what we sometimes do is we write new songs about old themes. And sometimes we take old songs and do them in a new fashion because that is what a dynamic living culture is about. And because we have an education system and a media who are quite seriously numpties from the top to the bottom in the name, uh, and the education system are run by <laughs> Sorry, I could say an awful lot worse, worse words than that. At the, at the level of what we do in terms of playing audiences, going into schools and all that stuff, we find that Scottish culture is absolutely thriving. It's absolutely brilliant. And it's constantly recreating itself. It's constantly experimenting, being reborn and all the rest of it. It doesn't get reflected enough in the media, but that doesn't matter. Politicians kind of deal with it because the problem is that if you're awfully involved with Scottish culture, you're seen as being political. And being political until awfully recently meant you're politically involved with Scottish culture, you're a nationalist. Whether we are or not, it doesn't matter. Because that's not what it's about. What it's about is the culture. We have got the opportunity to do all that because we come from a place that is culturally so secure and so strong. Thankfully, we've got a government that's beginning to notice that. And John, do you find, um, you've obviously been playing together for, 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 for a long time now, do you find um, the audiences over time have become more receptive to that kind of attitude towards music, particularly in places like uh, Royal Oak, where you've got small venues, small audiences you can talk to and, and talk about what you're doing with the music? I mean, I find any kind of place like this, you know, is, is, is good to play in, you know. It's, I mean, me and Stuart played pubs for years, you know, around about uh, Angus and Fife and places like that, you know, but it was good fun as well, we, we, we've, we've done that as well. It was a fantastic this evening, um, John Malcolm and Stuart McCarty, thank you very much. A pleasure. Thank you. Say goodbye, the bleedy burn, where there's neither leaf nor tree. Let me near hear on Gilchrist's feet, nor sich to evilly. As I get by the bleedy burn to the witch's house for calm, and Gilchrist's in among the wind, 
sikken a wonderland. She stain it fade thorny bush, send through the moss and fern. She's crooning it and cuddling it, as can it wear burn. And I wish the winds was nasty shirt nor the muckle mossy wheat. For while and Gilchrist fire to warm her clay cold feet. Catching up with John Malcolm and Stuart McCarty at Festival Folk at the Oak. A great report. Well done, Dave. Good Lovely stuff. Good job. Th- thank you. We're all uh, bloody proud of I, you. I did very, very little of the actual work. It was all down to John and Stuart, really, but uh, it was a fantastic evening. Indeed. It For same terms. Um, well, I'm looking up at the castle. I wish I could be going to the tattoo. Well, I don't really. Don't really care. Um, don't say that too loud, Frank. There are a lot of people here very excited they are. They're holding, to see the tattoo. They're holding the tickets. They're also looking at us as if we're some kind of important feature of the tattoo. <laughs> believe- <laughs> no, no, we're leaving. Yeah. In momentarily. We're the satire. <laughs> anyway, um... Yes, did you know the tattoo is the most popular show during festival time? I did, yes, and it runs for for a long time, doesn't it? Over the fringe and beyond, and uh, it's always sold out within about two seconds of tickets going online. But who cares about the tattoo? That's not what we're about. We're exactly, about folk. Exactly, exactly. Podcast. Ah, oh, oh, the jingle. There it goes. Where Thank did that come God. from? Another week, oh. another show. And another fistful of grade A reports. Indeed, indeed. Well, that's all for this week. Um, until the next show, don't forget you can keep yourself entertained at gardensessions.co.uk where there's a wealth of free folk music to listen to and download as well as the last three months' worth of episodes. All latest folk news, top ten, complete Dave's angles, Tom's folk odyssey blog, and currently available to listen to in the Bothy Vaults is Frank's report from Edinburgh Festival 2006 where he met the members of Luminous and Orchestra. So plenty to keep you going. And I'd uh, just like to mention, I'm sorry for uh, Chris Silver's absence, he's still recovering. Uh, he was a bit love-shocked by uh, the Bert Yanch interview, I think, and he's still recovering in bed with a wet flannel on his head. <laughs> Which you will hear on the next show. And just to point out that if you want to contribute to the Letters Bag, it's podcast at gardensessions.co.uk. And if you want to affect the download chart, it's gardensessions.co.uk forward slash music for all your free downloads. He's very, very good. Till next time, anyway, we're going to leave you with Findlay Napier and the Barroom Mountaineers with the Battle of Corrie McClough. They'll be appearing at St Bride's Venue 123 at this Edinburgh's festival uh, tonight, uh, Tuesday the 12th of August. Uh, and I believe I'm going on to see that, so I better get my skates on. Um, so till next time, from myself, Jack Foster, Frank Barkett, Dave the Angles Gimbal, take it easy. I want a unicycle, Dave. Goodbye. Cheerio. December on the 21st, a party over Scottish greys. Put among her mountaineers, some whiskey from them for to seize. The sword and pistol by their side, they thought to mark a bold attack. All they wanted was to seize, was Donald we had smuggled trap. The gauge and Anna's greys come on and they were Donald that saloon. He said, you know, whiskey, I'm in seas by virtue of the British crown. Hoot, toot, quote, Donald, no, say fast, you can, no whiskey is her name. She fears now you, nor your grey horse, nor yet your muckle bearded men. Dunma do a do a do, dunma do a daddy o. And all they wanted was to seize was Donald B. as smuggled trap. Then Donald and his men drew up and Donald he did gee command. And all the odds were Donald had was but a stack and alka hand. And Donald and his boys drew up against the law was at his back. When their sticks they splinters went, we stains they made their bold attack. Tell them a do a do a do, tell them a do a daddy o. And all they wanted was to seize was Donald we as smuggled old And 
that buzz hour there fell a horseman on the plain Oh Sandy unto Donald sign He killed in all the bearded men But he got up and laughed his horse And after Amory he flew Left the rest to do their best As they had done at Waterloo But Donald and his men stuck fast And got the beardies quit the field Gager, he was thumped wheel Afore his pride would let him yield Then Donald's men, they all cried out You filthy nasty Gager loon If ye come back, you'll ne'er win him To see your ochter heart up tune Tell him a do, a do, a do Tell him a do, a daddy, oh And all they wanted was to seize Was Donald, we had smuggled drab Tell him a do, a daddy, oh And all they wanted was to seize Was Donald, we had smuggled drab Mmm, 